Helen Mel Building Marin, our floating dream home. Hope you enjoy a look at our life of building a catamaran. Hi everybody and welcome back. In this episode, we installed two drains from the elf cold pit through the bridge deck. The drains are 50mm diameter. They are drilled through and then coated in waste internally. We then install some homemade clamshells. These take more time to make and install, but there is no screw to corrode or leak, so we'll rather take the time to do them this way. We also had in store a 100ml waste drop pipe from the galley seam as well as the galley bench top. This is a PVC drain pipe glassed in with 450 GSM. We also made up a clamshell for these just to try and eliminate any updraft. We have started to do the final sand on all of the outside of the boat, ready for top coat. As we moved around it sanding away, we still find little bits that were missed and just not good enough. So we fill them with fairing paste and sand them off again. It's a slow process and a hard work on the arms so when you have had enough, it's best to do something else for a while, then come back to it later. When it's too hot, too dark, or you have had enough of sanding in the main workshop, then it's time to play inside. We have been putting a DC panel together. We have the panel cut out from a company up in Cairns, for our drawing. We then mounted it into the frame ready to mount to the side of the helm station. The panel has all the breakers we need for the main system as well as fits off to a port and a starboard sub panel. We split the three main rolls of low amp breakers onto common positive bus bar but for the High loads ones such as the winkless and the winches, we have them on their own feet from the Vitron distributor. Okay, so as you would have seen, we've, um, we've been off time, spending time wiring up the, uh, the DC panel. Things that you do when you're not out the main workshop working on stuff every night time working on it, on other things. Um, so what we actually did was we, we wired up the diesel panel and then we started to do run a few tests. And one of the things we actually found which was that the LEDs that we purchased the let us know that we've got a brake light are way too bright. I mean, these things are super intense um, and actually blinding. In the middle of the night, um, you know, if you're doing a passage or whatever, these would be just way, way too bright and take away your night vision. So in the end, uh, we had a bit of a think about it. what we ended up doing is put a 32k resistor on the resistor here on the on the uh, on the negative side of the of the, each globe, and this is what we actually ended up with. So as you can see, the intensity of these globes is, is probably quite acceptable, yeah, meaning that you know, during the daytime you'll still be able to. See that you've actually got a breaker turned on, but it's, it's actually powered up. But at night time, it just won't take away any light. Compared um, to that, <laughs> as you can see, that's quite a, quite a difference in, with just a little tiny little three dollar one. Actually, about thirty percent resistor. While we were fitting the forward cockpit hatches. 
We decided to make a seat in the cockpit just in front of the helm station. It would be a nice place to sit while underway, but also a good place to store spare lines, etc. As usual, it needed to be glued, coved, taped, and yes, sanded. Before we paint the aft section, we thought it would be a good idea to test the David crane with the real tender. The tender was made by me, so I was eager to make sure Cal didn't drop it. We have raised many tender before, but always over water, so this was quite daunting over concrete to be honest. We are glad we did, as even though it seems to work well, we found a few things we could improve on to make it more idiot proof to raise and lower. So we will do this before we paint. As some would have seen on our first video, we have installed a generator before we had put on the decks. The gen set was an AC3 21 kilowatts unit. We had planned to use three inverter as a charge system for the 48 DC bank as well as range standards. But after a lot of thinking, we decided to remove it and change to a 48 volt DC generator which would be much more efficient.
As we already had the Lombardini generator with a 1404 motor, we choose to pull it apart and fit a 48 volt DC permanent magnet alternator. We have used a Datacom DKG379 controller. This unit can control the motor slash alternator base, the voltage slash load required to charge a 48 volt bank directly as well as can output 400 amps to drive the motors. It's been quite a challenge to get it all together but the test we have run so far seems to show it will work as we want. Albeit we have a minor issues with the throttle actuator not having enough torque to cover the full throttle range. It's still looking like we have a solution as we want it. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this insight to building a catamaran.